and welcome to Verizon Arena in Little Rock, Arkansas. And the finals are set and much anticipated. The number five Tennessee Lady Vols out to prove that they are still the class of the very tough SEC against one of the country's surging programs, the third ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. Welcome to Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods, as you are watching the SEC on ESPN, Tennessee 27 and 4, South Carolina 29 and 2. Hi again, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. With Carolyn Peck, I'm Paul Sunderland. And the Tennessee Lady Vols have absolutely everything that South Carolina wants. First of all, eight national championships. Secondly, 17 postseason conference tournament wins. South Carolina is going to break through if that's going to happen today. Their player of the year, Tiffany Mitchell, has got to get it going. In the SEC tournament, Tiffany Mitchell has been held below her average. And this is a player that is in the top three in the SEC in scoring and field goal percentage. She can go off the bounce. She can stretch the defense and knock down the three. So it opens up things for the bigs. But they're going to have their hands full with Tennessee Sierra Burdick. Burdick was big against Kentucky. She was being the playmaker. She can go off the bounce as well. And she can stretch the three. She had 20 points and 11 rebounds against the Wildcats. She'll need to have more of that today. Let's look at the side-by-side. -side. It was South Carolina over Tennessee on February 23rd in Columbia, 71 to 66. There you see the resumes, 17 to zero. And South Carolina and Dawn Staley certainly want to change that. And this year, they were both 15 and one and shared the regular season title. None too happy about it. For more on that, let's go to the sideline and our Kara Capuano. South Carolina head coach Dawn Staley told us, Paul, that she is the youngest of five in her family. She had to wear a lot of hand-me-downs growing up. And frankly, she does not like to share. She wished that that trait would have come to play last Sunday for her Gamecocks a little extra competitive fuel. Both teams received their regular season co-champion trophies Friday before their quarterfinals games. Staley told me this morning, intangibles will be key if the Gamecocks are to win a title today. That desire to not be denied this time, it will manifest an extra effort for 50-50 balls, for loose balls, and Staley plans to use her depth, all those fresh legs, to keep South Carolina's energy high for this title tilt. Thank you, Kara. South Carolina's bench accounts for 48% of their points. But let's first take a look at who is going to start this all-important game. Ariel Massengale has got to make shots. Andrea Carter will get the defensive assignment of guarding Tiffany Mitchell, who again has struggled. Foul trouble yesterday in the semifinal against LSU. Only 6 of 18 so far in tournament play. And we are set to go. South Carolina will be the designated home team in their white uniforms. And we're underway. Now the number one priority for South Carolina against LSU was to get the ball in the paint. But LSU in the first half did a terrific job of personnel assignment, forcing South Carolina to take a lot of perimeter shots. Look how much room the starting point guard, Kadisha Sessions, is being given by number five in Orange, Massengale. Shot clock at eight. Three-pointer on the way off the front of the iron and the long rebound tracked down by Bashara Graves, who had 20 points in the first meeting. Graves can make that shot. Rhythm dribble off the back of the iron, not close. How important or how impactful will nerves be early in this basketball game? Well, the Tennessee Lady Vols have experience of being here. This is the first time for South Carolina. Tiffany Mitchell driving to the basket with her first miss. There is Don Staley, the reigning national and SEC coach of the year. Three-time Olympic gold medalist voted into the Hall of Fame in 2013 in her seventh season. South Carolina has been very much in the headlines over the last couple of years, but boy, it wasn't easy in the beginning. Just 2-13 and 13 her first year in the conference. Massingale, three-pointer on the way, rattles in and out, and rebound taken by Elam Ibium, and an early foul called on Bashara Graves. And we talked yesterday as we take a look at Holly Warlick in her third season. Three-time All-American has her jersey retired at Tennessee, her 30th overall year with the Lady Vols. We talked yesterday about how important the officiating was going to be in this game. We expected it to be very physical indeed, and already, by definition, if you a little bit of a touch foul on Graves inside. Well, and Graves is the main power and strength for the Lady Vols inside. And she's got to play careful now. 
and South Carolina went straight at her to Elm Ibium. Reynolds pull up jump shot hit on the arm and it'll be two free throws. Very good recognition by South Carolina going right after Graves. Well, Bashar Graves did her job initially of keeping Ibium off the block and out making her face up, but then Ibium brought the ball to the basket. Jordan Reynolds, an 86% free throw shooter, talked about the officiating and what an impact that might be, but also Tennessee has been absolutely lights out from the free throw line over their last seven or eight games, and they're on pace to break a school record for best efficiency from the free throw line on the season. The postseason free throws are so important. I tweeted out earlier that teams need to get their free throw percentage tight because it's tournament time. You're going to need those to advance. They were 18 of 20 yesterday in their semifinal win against Kentucky. 17 of 18 in the second half. Tennessee bringing that 1-2-2 two, two pressure. It caused Georgia problems. And then they used it to turn over Kentucky as well. Outside to Mitchell, right side to Dozier, going right inside after Bashara Graves. Again, good ball movement on the perimeter. Shovel pass inside to Elisa Welsh. Welsh for her first basket had 19 points for 14 rebounds in the regular season meeting. Bottoming out, Jordan Reynolds at the point guard position, burying a big three. No, ner no nerves there. She hit a couple of threes against Kentucky yesterday. She's feeling very comfortable around the perimeter. It's just her mid-range jump shot that's been a little off in this tournament. Vivian immediately double teamed outside to Dozier. Tiffany Mitchell up fake has that ball rattle in and out goes to get her own rebound and then immediately fouled by Sierra Burdick offensive rebound such an important story in this basketball game as it was in the first meeting but look at Jordan Reynolds she has been the initial offensive spark for the Lady Vols knocking down the three but South Carolina's ball movement making the defense shift. That was the adjustment they made in the second half against LSU to get the ball inside. You saw one small adjustment that Tennessee has to make. Kadisha Sessions, you're not going to take that shot. There's no reason why Jordan Reynolds should go for that ball fake, and that's where the defense started to break down. You've got to be more disciplined than that. We've got to recognize who the pass is going to and what your assignment is. Is it a shooter or not? Carter around the screen. Inside to Graves, working against Ibium. Shot clock winding down. Carter looking at it for a three, and so first it's Reynolds. And now Andrea Carter at back-to-back -back threes, and Tennessee leads at 8-6. They made nine of 19 threes in the semifinal yesterday. Well, Tennessee is going to have to make perimeter shots, but to give your shooters time by getting the ball inside first, make the defense collapse, and then pass it out. Mitchell kicks out to Sessions, left all alone, and she buries a three. Said, hey, you can't leave me all alone. <laughs> Big make for Kadisha Sessions. And good shooting by both Tennessee and South Carolina early. So much for nerves. Well, it's better offense, especially for Tennessee, starting out in their game against Kentucky. First four minutes, no field goals. Good help by Sessions. Graves going baseline. What a tough make against a really good shot blocker in Ibia. That's where Bashar Graves was so successful in Columbia, South Carolina, of pulling Ibium or what it, whatever post is guarding her away and then going off the dribble. Tennessee in that matchup zone the entire first four minutes and 45 seconds and quickly out to Massengale on the break, working against Dozier. Nice up fake down the lane, counts if it goes, and they called an offensive foul. 
Wow, we got to look at this again. This is a huge call against Bashar Graves because remember, Isabel Harrison out with a knee injury. So Tennessee playing a little bit shorthanded in the middle. Charge or block. Wow, big play early in this game. Anytime you come out to the court and you know you're playing Tennessee, there's there's a sense of respect for the program they've been able to build. Because we were home, I think we won the game. You know, that, that created an advantage for us. But to do it on a national stage and to represent our conference, I think it would be a tremendous thing. I just think we try to uh, exploit them in the post because we know, you know, we're a bigger team than them. We've got to limit the offensive rebounds. If we want to redeem ourselves, that's something that we're going to have to do for 40 minutes. Well, no question what happened in the paint in this basketball game would be vitally important. South Carolina dominated the first meeting. Tennessee leading here, but this is just huge. Second foul on Bashar Graves. I don't think that Asia Dozier was there. She was still no. sliding over. That's a bad call. That's a really bad call early in a huge game for both of these programs. One of them is going to be a number one seed. The winner, the loser might drop to the two line. That's a bad call. Well, now Mia Moore has been called upon for the Lady Vols. She's going to have to play like she did the first four games of the season when Isabel Harrison was out. Had a pretty good tournament so far. Scored 20 points in limited action. Her role has expanded because of the injury to Isabel Harrison. But Mia Moore, six foot three junior out of Chicago. 14 points against Georgia, six against Kentucky. Knocking down shots and also getting her share of rebounds. Carter inside and that ball blocked away by Ibian. We think Andrea Carter, Andrea Carter is going to have to recognize is if El Ibium is inside, you want to kick that out. She's going to block it every time. Carter again down inside. Speaking of block shots, you remember that Kentucky, uh, earlier in the matchup, uh, South Carolina against Arkansas, it was they had 15 block shots in that game. Bashar Graves went out with over 15 minutes remaining. She'll be out for the rest of the first half. Ibium down inside with the air ball taken by Reynolds. That's a plus right there for Tennessee for at least Mia Moore to bother Ibium inside. Excellent read by Welch deflecting away that kick ahead pass. Jamie Nard will be in at the next dead ball. And will also Elena Coates for South Carolina. Inside for Welch that rattles in and out. Ball deflected away. Nicely done by Mia Moore. Mitchell and Burdick have both been quiet respectively for Tennessee and South Carolina. That pass a little too low for Moore. Let it go through her hands. It'd be him two feet in the paint. It's too late to give it to her then. She had Mia Moore pinned earlier. Well, I don't know why they have Sessions on the same side as Ibian because Sessions is not a prolific shooter. Do right. you want to space it out? Probably make a liar out of me right now. She sure did. <laughs> she knocked it down. She said, hey, Paul Sunderland, take some of that. Hey, I'm just going by the scouting <laughs> report we've seen all season long. Kadisha Sessions not knocking down just one, but a couple of outside shots. And now South Carolina on top 12-10. Burdick, her first look, boy, she has been playing so well. A double-double in the semifinals in Kentucky, and three of her last five games have been double-figure scoring and rebounding. Well, she's going to have to shoulder the load, especially with Bashar Graves on the bench with two fouls. Tennessee changing up their defense is trying not to allow South Carolina to get comfortable and pick out where they can get the ball inside. Shot clock at five. Dozier's got to go. Kick into the corner. Sessions again. Three corner off the back of the iron. Offensive rebound. Already a couple of early offensive rebounds for South Carolina. Ibium with it in the post. Nice turnaround baseline jump shot. And yet another. Elisa Welch holds the career record at South Carolina for offensive rebounds. That had got to have been a priority in the scouting report. You've got to keep her off the glass if you want to have a chance to compete with South Carolina. 
Mitchell buries the three. Second chance points. Burdick trying to step through. Might have got away with a travel. More there. Not close that time. Over the rim with Ibium running at it. Right back into Ibium again. Running left-handed hook. And Tennessee trying to push the pace. Uh, Tennessee needs to try to score before Ibium gets back in the middle of the paint. Not a bad idea. Good recognition off the bounce by Jordan Reynolds. Reynolds off to a very good start offensively. Number zero right here. Threatening the trap with seven points for the Lady Balls. Ibium left unguarded. Wow. Point blank range and Burdick with a rebound in traffic. Uh, that was a terrific delivery by Tiffany Mitchell. That was a blown assist. Reynolds again. Wild shot. And that's going to lead to a run out. Bad offense at one end and good recovery at the defensive end as Dozier was going to the rim. This game is going to go back and forth and back and forth. And Tiffany Mitchell, she's the SEC Player of the Year, going to try to get the first championship for the Gamecocks. All right, thank you very much, Zubin. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. South Carolina on top 15-14. And Kadisha Sessions, what a bonus with her knocking down shots. Well, if you're playing the percentages, she's averaged shooting about 28% from the three-point line. Now, that's a little inside the three, but she is two for three so far today. So Tennessee's going to have to probably adjust not defending her when she looks to take the shot. Coates and Wilson, Asia Wilson wearing number 22 in white down in the low post, the SEC Freshman of the Year, also first team all conference. Carol Moore on Kadisha Sessions. That was Holly Warlick's first point in the Tennessee huddle. She said, we need to come out more on Sessions right now. As well, Kyra Elsey reinforcing to the younger players, Middleton Nard Carter, I need you to box out. Tina Roy, a wild shot, effective in the semifinal. Their semifinal win against LSU, five of 10 from three-point range. Now, Nia Moore having to go against Elena Coates. Coates has just been fantastic in this SEC tournament. She's leading South Carolina in scoring, almost 14 a game. Shot clock down once again. Burdick, second look, and straight away, two for two. Sierra Burdick continues to play so well now in her senior season. Little half-court token trap. Tennessee used it very effectively against Georgia to open their tournament play. They were one of the top four seeds, the number two seed, as a matter of fact. So they advanced with a double bye into the quarterfinals. It's really getting to be tournament time. The men's West Coast Conference tournament continues from Las Vegas on Monday with the semifinals. First at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Pepperdine takes on number seven, Gonzaga. And then at 11.30 on ESPN2, Portland faces BYU. The WCC tournament Monday on ESPN. And 9 o'clock in ESPN 2 at 11.30. Alexa Middleton coming up with a loose ball, and Nia Moore ahead of the pack. Moore, pull-up jumper over Coates. That would have done a lot for her confidence. That rattled in and out. That was a good move by Nia Moore. It was a smart take. She just got to finish. Asia Wilson, a traveling violation, no doubt about that. Easy play to call. This is big for Alexa Milton. Watch the hustle. She's on the ground, so she doesn't get called for the travel. Immediately starts the dribble. That's a little globetrotter move. Very nicely done by Alexa Middleton out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Five foot nine freshman. And if you're wondering where Bashara Graves is, she picked up her second personal foul. A very questionable charge. Jamie Nard down the middle. Wild shot needed a bounce, not there. Offensive rebound taken by Burdick, but over the end line just to finish the thought. Referees are going to talk about this one. And that's going to be ruled off of South Carolina, so Tennessee will have it with a fresh shot clock. But very questionable charge call against Bashara Graves, and so she's had to sit the rest of this first half. 
That looked like that was off the sh off of Sierra Burnett. Nard working around the screen, taking it into traffic, and somehow rattles it down. I'm not sure that Jamie Nard even saw the rim over Coates. I believe that Tennessee has taken a page out of Kentucky's playbook. Most teams think in order to beat South Carolina, you've got to make a lot of perimeter shots. You've got to be physical with South Carolina and not be afraid to attack. Welch, little 14-footer off the baseline. No, Coates right there for the offensive rebound and putback. You've got to keep Coates off the glass. You've got to box her out. You cannot wait until the shot goes up. You've got to anticipate and get position early. Jamie Nard trying to keep the Lady Vols in this ball game in the attack mode, going off the bounce, getting the sweet bounce off the glass. Yeah, good one here between Tennessee and South Carolina as expected, but these tickets already punch Notre Dame along with George Washington. And speaking of Notre Dame winning 17 in a row, Princeton absolutely perfect so far. Tennessee State and Chattanooga, very, very good team. Just ask Tennessee and Stanford. Exactly, but I think after that Chattanooga game, Holly Warwick was able to use that in the Texas game as examples to getting your focus back to defense. Tiffany Mitchell needed a basket, missed her first couple of opportunities. One at point blank range that rattled in and out, but comes up with a three there. When you look at who's on the bench, Andrea Carter, she's had the assignment of covering T Tiffany Mitchell. When she went to the bench, Mitchell scores. Nard in the lane forever. Yeah, that was a five second violation in the lane, but finally called. Well, getting the ball inside to Elena Coates and when Jamie Nard dug in, and that's smart to put the shooter on the same side as the post player. So if you double in, Tiffany Mitchell's gonna make you pay. Tiffany Mitchell averaging 15 points per game on the season, had 16 points and seven rebounds. In the first meeting, and the ball will go back to Tennessee. Trailing 20 to 18, again, with no Bashara Graves. Picked up her second personal foul with over 15 minutes remaining. Reynolds hit a three and hits another one. Jordan Reynolds, hot for Tennessee in the first half. Now with 10. Look at the three-point shooting for both of these teams. Tennessee, very efficient. And South Carolina taking their share. Asia Wilson overpowering Nia Moore and Sierra Burdick down inside. We'll get to the free throw line. And Jordan Reynolds, she challenged Asia Wilson, said, if you're not gonna come out and guard me, I'm gonna make you pay. Dawn Staley had an absolute fit after that. She was very disappointed in her freshman not covering Jordan Reynolds. Asia Wilson, a special basketball player, and this game was not always her first love when she was small growing up, but her father continued to promote the game to her, and last year she was the number one high school player in the nation, and, and as Dawn Staley's program has continued to build, she is reaching out to all of the best players, no matter where they happen to be from all over the country. Just so happens that Asia Wilson is from Hopkins, South Carolina. Wilson almost stolen by Middleton. She is a good finisher. Look at that play. What a play by Jordan Reynolds. The block shot and then throwing the ball off of Asia Wilson. Look, this is don't quit. Jordan Reynolds with the block and then saves it off of Asia Wilson so that Tennessee has possession of the basketball. Tied at 21, 5.50 remaining in the opening half. Tennessee has won this title 17 times. South Carolina looking for their first. They shared the regular season title, both with 15 and one records. Reynolds is feeling it. She's looking for a shot instead to Middleton. And fouled by Bianca Cuevas from behind. In a very clean game so far, very few fouls, unless you ask Bashar Gray. She, <laughs> she doesn't think so much of it, but uh, only 14 fouls on Tennessee in just the second on South Carolina, and also very, very few turnovers in this game. Well, so far, Tennessee is holding it down with Bashar Graves being out. 
and it's been just a combination of Jordan Reynolds, Sierra Burdick, the hustle play of Alexa Middleton. Strong rebound taken again by Coates. Bianca Cuevas out of the Bronx, New York, another top recruit, five foot six freshman and McDonald's High School All-American. Cuevas got the ball stuck a little bit on her shoulder and a turnover here for South Carolina, just their fourth. See, when the game is a half-court game, that's where Bianca Cuevas is really has struggled this season. She's more of a up and down, she wants a up-tempo fast game. I'm impressed with Jamie Nard and her, her development over the season. She wasn't getting much playing time early, but once she's got minutes, she's done a lot with it. That's a big rebound by Mia Moore. Good kick out to Middleton, expert three-point shooter on the way and good. Now this time an offensive rebound and second chance points for Tennessee. The Lady Balls now four of six from outside the arc. Tennessee leads it 24-21 and back in their zone defense, Tina Roy, very dangerous three-point shooter, 23 and white out at the point. And Tennessee in this zone, they've got to keep an eye on Tina Roy. Well, quick shot by Cuevas, an excellent block out that time by Burden. Run the floor and an excellent delivery. Reynolds going inside to Sierra okay. Burdick and Don Staley is incensed at the lack of transition defense and has called timeout. Tennessee leading it 26 to 21. Jordan Reynolds recognizing Sierra Burdick on the cut. Helps Tennessee take control. Number five, Tennessee over number three, South Carolina, 26-21 on a 14 to six run. And although South Carolina has the advantage in second chance points, Tennessee is really stepping up and doing a good job on the boards. Well, it had to be a big focus coming in today because South Carolina just really controlled the boards in their first meeting in Columbia. Tennessee out rebounding South Carolina currently 15 to 11 outside the sessions already hit a couple of threes from exactly that spot offensive rebound once twice and back up and in this time by Welsh. If there's one person you got to forget about if I don't get the rebound I'm just going to make sure Elisa Welch doesn't get it. Well if you're Tennessee as good a job as we just talked about they had done that was way too easy. Good defense outside that time by the long arms and six foot eight wingspan of Elena Coates. Welsh, tough chance, falling away on the baseline and rebound taken by Tennessee's Nard. So the last time Jamie Nard posted up, Elisa Welch had both hands stuck Underneath Nard's arms, I don't know how that won the foul. Carter against some tough defense, ill-advised shot. Sessions was chasing over the top of the screen, and Carter not quite enough air space and threw up an air ball. Middleton comes back on, as does Asia Wilson replacing Elena Coates. As we expected, back and forth basketball game, nine lead changes early before the 14 to six run by Tennessee it gave them their largest lead. And off the offensive rebound, that ball almost stolen. South Carolina back within three. Mitchell again, open in the corner, already hit one from there, block out in Kadisha session. So everybody's getting on the offensive glass. Welsh down inside, lays it up and in, and Burdick had to be a little careful not to pick up another foul. The first time these two teams met, South Carolina had 21 second chance points. They had 11 offensive rebounds. If Tennessee wants to get back-to-back -back titles, they're gonna have to box out. Good up fake, yeah, look, whistle a little late, but that was clearly a foul on Wilson. We watched Sessions really just outworks Ariel Massingale. And then once they got control of the basketball, Elisa Welch pays it off for two points. You saw Sierra Burdick basically just staying away and trying to avoid contact already with one personal foul. Couldn't afford picking up another. 
Good little drop pass to Moore, but that's the second time that Nia Moore has not been able to handle a pass down around her knees. Eight turnovers now for Tennessee. Asia Wilson right to the rim. And South Carolina back on top with another lead change, 27-26. A minute and 21 left in the first half. Asia Wilson is left-handed, and she really, since the UConn game, she has picked up her intensity. She has learned that you've got to work at another level in order to be UConn successful. That shot is rejected on the perimeter. Roy, quick on a three-pointer, no, and Andrea Carter in traffic grabs the rebound that is tied up by Kadisha Sessions, and that will give South Carolina another possession. The officials are talking it over. And they called a foul on Sessions. So it'll be Tennessee basketball. Just the fourth team foul on South Carolina and also just four on Tennessee. Looks like Khadija Sessions just had the basketball. That's tough. Maybe just a handful of flesh before she got some leather. The officials, Tina Napier, D. Kantner, and Mark Zentz are the officials for today's game. But this is a victory for Tennessee to be able to be in this ball game with Rashard Graves on the bench. Nard looking at a three-pointer, that off the back of the iron. Rebound taken by South Carolina. Shot clock and game clock separated by just a tenth or so. But Asia Wilson on the run out. What a player at six foot five. Remember the LSU game? Transition basket baskets for South Carolina. Got their momentum going. South Carolina picking up the tempo, trying to take control into the locker room, led by a freshman, Asia Wilson. Twenty point five seconds remaining in a very competitive, as we anticipated, first half between South Carolina and Tennessee with Carolyn Peck on Paul Sunderland here in Little Rock, Sierra Burdick. Averaging almost a double-double in the absence of Isabel Harrison and the timeout called by Tennessee head coach Holly Warlick to make sure that they have everything in line for these final 20 seconds in their final possession. Jordan Reynolds back on the floor running the baseline. Straight away three-pointer taken with lots of time left. That missed by Massingale. And the first half has come to a close. There's the horn. Ten lead changes. Tennessee went on a 14 to 6 run. They played all but four minutes without Bashara Graves. So in spite of the fact that they trail South Carolina by three, as you said, that's a win for Tennessee going to the locker room. Well, the thing that I think the momentum swung to South Carolina because the South Carolina started picking up tempo and getting run out transition baskets. Now let's go over to Kara Capuano with Don State. Paul, thank you. Coach, it seemed like early on offensively trying to find what worked, what was working that gave you the momentum there toward the end of the first half. Well, it seems like we created some offense from our defense. That's what's working is to play a little bit quicker. Um, but we're getting the ball where we want it. We're getting the ball in the paint. Our post players just have to finish. We talked this morning about the intangibles, the desire, the competitive fuel. What are you seeing from your team to that end? I, I see we're getting after. I see we're into it. Um, I think they're a little bit tight, just like Tennessee is. But the team that gets back to their comfort zone is going to team that opens this game up. We'll watch for that. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Paul. All right, thank you, Karen. Now let's go to Zubin Mahente, Kara Lawson, and Rebecca Lobo for the Heroes Charge. Halftime report, South Carolina on top, 29-26. Welcome once again to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. This is the SEC on ESPN and at the half, thanks to an 8-0 run over the last four minutes, South Carolina leads Tennessee 29-26. to 26. 
With Carolyn Peck, I'm Paul Sunderland. And again, the big story, Bashara Graves plays only five minutes. Tennessee feeling very good about itself. But over those last four minutes, not only did they go scoreless, also South Carolina really started to impose themselves on the backboards. They did, but they got off to a good start with, with Bashara Graves on the bench. And it was Jordan Reynolds, the sophomore. She must like playing in the title game. She was distributing the basketball in transition. Terrific defense. And then also bringing the offense, knocking down the three for Tennessee. But South Carolina has got to be happy that now their SEC Player of the Year, Tiffany Mitchell, is knocking down the three. She has already reached her tournament average of eight points, and it's only halftime, Paul. Tennessee's going to have to lock up some defense because she can get hot. Looking at the numbers, South Carolina was shooting just 30%. They closed just 11 of 31, but they were 4 of 11 from three-point range. Tennessee pretty efficient. They fell off again over those last four minutes when they were scoreless. 10 of 24 overall, 4 of 8. Very few free throws shot by either team. And again, it'll be the rebounding and second-chance points already. South Carolina with 11 second-chance points in this game. Tennessee had a, had a rebounding lead until the last four minutes. Last four minutes, Tennessee was out-rebounded by South Carolina by 10. Well, they can do that to you. They'll start with Elam Ibium, but they'll come on with Coates and Asia Wilson was fantastic over the last couple of minutes as well as South Carolina got out in the open court for a couple of easy scores. Just underway here, second half. Sessions along with Dozier. Tiffany Mitchell down inside to Elisa Welsh. Can't get that to fall and gets her own rebound once again. The heart and soul of this Gamecock team. And the adjustment that Don Staley has made offensively is Khadijah Sessions of Tennessee is not going to guard her, use her as a screener. And she set that back screen for Welch on the back side of that zone. Bashar Graves back on the floor and picked up that charging foul with just five minutes gone in this game. Pull up jump shot by Carter. Wow, didn't even hit the rim. That off the backboard and easily taken by South Carolina. South Carolina at 29 and 2, Tennessee 27 and 4. South Carolina ranked number three. The Lady Vols at number five. Rebound taken by Burdick. Reynolds wants to run. Reynolds wants to score. Throws that ball up. Wild shot for Sharp. Graves right there for the putback. I asked Karen Capuano to ask Holly Warlick, what, 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 how was she going to play Bashar Graves because she had those two fouls? And Holly Warlick's quote was, go let Bashar Graves do her thing. Well, then better do it without picking up another foul, particularly <laughs> early. Doing her thing is just fine, fine and dandy. When Tennessee go in a zone. Boy, Ibium has got it so deep, and Graves can't offer much resistance. And who is there again for the offensive rebound? Welsh again, 19 points, 14 rebounds in the first meeting back in February. That was won by South Carolina, 71 to 66. Welsh, 15 footer along the baseline, needs a bounce and gets it. Lisa Welch is the heart and soul of South Carolina. The energy she brings, the leadership she brings. She does the, she does the things that are not in the in the stat sheet because she's keeping everybody focused and in tune to the game. Graves, that shot off the front of the iron and then out of bounds will go down as a team rebound. Ten points, seven rebounds for Welsh. Well, just watch. She's on the backside, the zone offense, and goes untouched to get the offensive boards and then to knock down that short jumper, that short corner area. She's dangerous from there. Mitchell being aggressive here, spins it up and in away from three defenders. Now she's showing why she's SEC Player of the Year. Biggest lead of the game so far for South Carolina. Now it's 7, 35, 28, just underway second half. Reynolds weaving through the defense of South Carolina now with a dozen. Well, South Carolina, though, is making a concerted effort to go to Tiffany Mitchell and Elisa Welch. Welch isolated against Burdick at the elbow. Thought she got hit on the arm. That ball deflected out of bounds. No call there. Tennessee basketball. Well, Reynolds 
Nice ball handling, crossover back to the middle, knocks down the jumper. But watch Tiffany Mitchell. This is the SEC Player of the Year, back to back. She can find ways to score in so many different ways. Came in struggling so far in the tournament again, just six of 18 from the floor and eight turnovers on top of that. Graves down inside, nice pass, and somehow Andrea Carter, Ibium went out to help on Graves, and that left her alone right at the front of the rim. Tennessee fans starting to get into it, and no surprise, there are more Lady Vols fans than anybody else, although lots of South Carolina fans sprinkled in as well. We're going to Welsh all the time here. Burdick lost her footing, and Elisa Welsh continues to have a huge game now with a dozen. Burdick, wild shot, well defended by Welsh, and the rebound on the floor comes to Dozier. Ibium, crowd wanted a, an offensive foul call there. She extended an elbow to try to get some space. Burdick running the floor, and a holding foul is going to be called against South Carolina. Tennessee doing all that they can to stay in it, making the extra pass, sharing the basketball, Graves to Carter. But it's South Carolina that has the answer. Lisa Welch has been all over the glass. The NCAA Women's Selection Show presented by Capital One is on ESPN, March 16th at 7 Eastern time. See which 64 teams make it into the tournament. And of course, of those 64 teams, how will they be distributed among the brackets and uh, the top seeds in each region right now, as you can see. And Tennessee currently a number two in the Albany Regional with UConn. I think that Tennessee is a number one seed instead of Maryland. And I say so because Tennessee has played 15 top 50 RPI teams, nine in the top 25. They have a record of 11 and four. That's more than any of the top number one, number one seeds that Charlie Cream has. Is the, the winner of this game is guaranteed a number one seed. Is the loser also guaranteed of being a number two seed? I think that I don't think you should be guaranteed a number two seed. I think that they should both be considered to be number one seeds. Irrespective of the outcome of this game. Irrespective of the outcome. I like that word, irrespective. One of my favorites. <laughs> well, she does a very good job on Sierra Burdick. We should comment on that as well. We've been talking about her scoring and rebounding. Defensively, she's been superb, number 24 in white. Well, Welch knew that she was going to have her hands full because Sierra Burdick had 20 and 11 against Kentucky yesterday. Long three-pointer on the way, off the front of the iron, balls on the floor, battled for it. Kadisha Sessions down there with Andrea Carter, and on the alternating possession arrow, it'll be Tennessee basketball. Where does Tennessee go for offense here? They've been struggling. Remember, they went scoreless for the last four minutes of the opening half. Andrea Carter has really struggled connecting on any of her outside shots. And the adjustment that South Carolina has made different from winning Columbia when Bashar Graves got the basketball on Coates, the lane was clear, and she was able to drive. Asia Dozier is in there to help. Tennessee has only scored three points over the last 10 minutes. Welch trying to carve out some space. And off the rebound, here comes Tennessee. Massingale kicking ahead for Carter. That's one way to go. Then you don't have to play against the set defense. Great finish by Carter. Well, if your outside shot's not working, a lot of times you can get your offensive rhythm by continuing to get runouts and attack the basket.
Inside to Coates, immediately double team back outside to Mitchell. That's a really good combination. Tiffany Mitchell on the same side of the floor with post-up player Elena Coates. It's a smart, you're right, it's smart to put the shooter on the same side as Coates because Andrea Carter went down to double down and then thought she could get back because she's got quickness. See how quick she gets to the basket in transition? You can't foul a jump shooter at the other end as Mitchell will go to the free throw line to shoot three. Mitchell an 86% free throw shooter so far that during conference play. Saw the numbers through the first two games, quarterfinals and semis. You knew that Tiffany Mitchell was going to have a big game here against Tennessee. During the regular season, Tiffany Mitchell was shooting 50% from the floor in the first two games of the tournament, 33. She's back on track today. Free throws good, 13-13 remaining, and South Carolina leading it 40 to 34. Well, Tennessee is fortunate as their offense has completely disappeared over the last seven or eight minutes. It's, it's not like South Carolina's lighting it up and pulling away. What Tennessee needs is Ariel Massingale to get involved offensively. That's a good drive by Jamie Nard. Some contact down away from the play. Is that Tiffany Mitchell who's down on all fours after the good take to the basket by Nard? Don Staley does not look too concerned. Teammates are out. No medical attention coming as yet. Oh, yeah, just a Jamie Nard inadvertently after he, she had shot the ball right hand came down across the forehead and nose area of Tiffany Mitchell. Oh, that hurts. That's what those stingers oh, to the nose hurts. look like. Brings, brings water to your eyes. Don Staley knows that her best player they're pretty tough. Didn't even wander down to see if she was all right. Look, you hope for the best. You just look away and go, she's going to get up. She's going to get up. Coates again looking down inside. She didn't even turn. Defender Jamie Nard was right there in between she and Welsh. I think Coates was expecting for Nard to come with the double team, but she stayed. It was really the guard that helped down. Inside the verdict and no space there. Aaron passed, but this is deflected out of bounds off of Mitchell in South Carolina. 13 to shoot. Tennessee trailing 40 to 36. Well, the first time these two teams met at halftime, it was a three-point game. It came down to really one possession at the end of the second half in Columbia. This is going to be tied all the way through. Very good pursuit by Burdick. Struggled a little bit offensively after going for 20 and 11 in the semifinals. Nard stepped back off the dribble. No rebound taken by Coates. Sessions pushing the action off the iron and will go to the line to shoot free throws. So it'll be Kadisha Sessions at the line for South Carolina when we come back. The Gamecocks leading Tennessee by four. Other tournaments coming up on ESPNU at 5.30 Eastern time. Number one UConn taking on East Carolina, and they will meet either USF or Tulane in the finals. That's on Monday at 7 Eastern time. USF and Tulane at 7.30 Eastern time as well on ESPNU. Back with Carolyn Peck, I'm Paul Sunderland. And UConn obviously a huge favorite to win yet another national championship. Back to the final four. You see either of these teams matching up with them and getting to the final four as well? well I think that both of these teams have the potential to get to Tampa. Now, when it gets to that championship game, I do know that Don Staley does want another crack at the Huskies because after having the experience in stores, there's a difference in talking about it as far as what to prepare for and going against it. Then there's another difference of now that you've gone against it, can you keep up with it? Well, what an impressive win that was for UConn. People had some question marks in their head after UConn went out to Stanford right at the beginning of the year and lost. But most of those questions were answered when, quite frankly, UConn absolutely took South Carolina apart. Well, Gino Ariana put Nurse and Tuck in the starting lineup, and they have rolled from there. Jamie Nard, the freshman out of Portland, Oregon, going right to the front of the rim. Six points off the bench. 41-38, 11-20 remaining. 
South Carolina looking for their first ever SEC postseason tournament title. Asia Wilson along the baseline. That was from a really tough angle. That was a good strong finish because I think she even got contact on the shot. You know, Paul, going into that last timeout, the rebounding is even. 26-26. Rage, couple of dribbles, step back jumper off the back of the iron. Good rebound taken by Gartina Roy, just on the floor now for South Carolina, wearing number 23 in white. Very good perimeter shooter. Well, Elena Coates has backed off of Michelle Graves, and she is daring her to take that shot. Where in Columbia, she was playing her tight, and Graves was going around her. Wilson stepped back, stripped away nicely by Berta. Massingale, nobody picks her up wide open from 17 feet, steps back and not close. Rebound taken by Coates. Well, because Ariel, Ariel Massingale is 5 for 25 so far in this SEC tournament. Wilson ducks her head, looking for the foul not there. Coates with a rebound. That one off of Jamie Nard. It'll be South Carolina basketball as Jordan Reynolds comes back on for Tennessee. Yeah, Ariel Massingale needs to find her offense. A 36% shooter from outside the arc overall on the season. But, uh, boy, really having a tough time finding the range here at Verizon Arena. Inside immediately in the easy score for Asia Wilson once again. Paint points for South Carolina. 22 already. Graves can make that shot. We've seen her do it all season long. Just got to shoot it with confidence. Tennessee needs her offense. And there's a turnover by Carter along the baseline. But you remember, Bashar Graves sat for 15 minutes in that first half. And so she hadn't gotten that sweat broken. She hasn't really settled into this ball game. Tenth turnover for Tennessee. Don Staley wants the South Carolina team to swing, move the basketball, and then get the ball inside to Elena Coates. Good play by Carter. Tiffany Mitchell lost the ball off the dribble. And on the held ball, it will be South Carolina. Boy, that's a break for South Carolina because that was a very poor offensive possession. Mitchell lost the, lost the ball on the floor, and on the held ball situation, they'll get a fresh shot clock out of it. See, I think that that rewards the offense. Absolutely. That's a rule that they should look at, and I'm sure will change. If, if the shot clock, you should not be able to get an advantage out of that when you have not executed effectively at the offensive end. Defense has played solid, yet they're the ones that suffer for it. Keep an eye on Tiffany Mitchell. Coach double team Aaron pass Asia Wilson cutting down the lane and here comes Reynolds working against Kadisha Sessions hit on the arm it'll be two free throws. Well now South Carolina very careless with some post passing. Third personal foul on Kadisha Sessions and she'll go over and visit with three time. Olympic gold medalist and her head coach Don Staley. But she is the best point guard to have played the game, Don Staley. No better teacher to teach the point guards of how to win ball games. Very important point how efficient Tennessee has been at the free throw line, particularly in the second half over the last seven games. Coming in at an 88% clip. And last night in the semifinal against Kentucky, they made 17 out of 18 in the second half. That one rings in and out. And now South Carolina has Olivia Gaines in the game. She has been a big senior and gone in in key moments, like in the Duke game. She was big on senior night against Mississippi State, and yesterday, 
distributing the basketball when South Carolina was struggling against LSU. Mitchell for three, Carter with a rebound. Tennessee looking to push it. Eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Tennessee trailing by six. Nard down inside, layup not there. Battle for the rebound comes out to Roy and now South Carolina looking to run. And that's gonna be a traveling violation. John Staley can't believe it. There, there's so many subtleties. When you're really a true great point guard, which he was, one of the very best, if not the best, there's a time, there's a place, there's a who as far as delivering the ball. And she wasn't happy with any of those. But she still wears her emotions on her sleeve just like she did as a player. It is fantastic to watch her on the sideline. Trying to post up Gaines down inside with Carter. Good cut that time by Nard. And misses the layup. Bashara Graves down inside. Some contact there. Foul on Wilson to be two free throws coming to Tennessee. We'll step aside when we come back. Free throws for Tennessee. 740 remaining for the championship. stay very positive with her basketball team because she knows that there's a lot to gain if they could pull off a victory here today. You know who these are? I do. And so of these teams, when you look at the comparison of schedule and you look at this line right here, why there is a question of whether or not Tennessee's a number one seed, I don't know. Well, we've been having the conversation all week here in Little Rock, and, and it, I think it's because of the absence of one of the game's best players, the senior Isabel Harrison. She tore her ACL on February 25th, and I think maybe predicting forward that Tennessee obviously has come down a notch without her available. Well, see, you, and you talk about the predictions, I think it's accomplishments. And so what the teams have accomplished to this point the rest of the players should be rewarded. And even after they lost Isabel Harrison, the only loss that they have has been to South Carolina, and they've averaged over 70 points a game. So they're still getting production even in her absence. Well, and they could remove all doubt, just win this championship, and then the conversation is a non-starter. You notice that very bright orange wrist on the right, on the wrist of... Uh, Holly Warlick, she broke that in an accident on campus. There's been a lot of ice and snow down in the south <laughs> recently and uh, went on a trip, road trip to Georgia and then finally came back after the game. Wrist was bothering her and, of course, bright orange, a pretty good color in Knoxville, Tennessee. They're talking about winning this championship. Tennessee has experience, but South Carolina looks very comfortable today. Don Staley has done a terrific job of preparing her team for this moment. Boy, Asia Wilson has been so good and so assertive down in the low block. Now with 11. 6.50 remaining, South Carolina leading at 47-39. Let's go quickly back over to Kara Capuano. What do you got, Karen? Well, we were talking about that offensive stagnancy that the Lady Vols dealt with late in the first half, early in the second half. She told me at halftime she is looking at number zero, Jordan Reynolds, to be the energizer bunny for this offense. She had a big role in the clutch last year in the title game, and Holly wants to see it again. That ball off the iron. Bashara Graves there, just as the shot clock was about to expire. Thank you, Kara. Well, back to Kara's point. Jordan Reynolds had 11 points in that championship game against Kentucky in the last four and a half minutes is when she scored nine of those 11 points. And I'm going to tell you, South Carolina, when you have a player on your team, and her name is Tiffany Mitchell, it's going to be hard to pull off the win. Boy, so much attention being given to Asia Wilson down on the block. Mitchell was open, and Elisa Welsh with an easy baseline jumper. Now with 14. And a 10-point lead, and Holly Warlick working one of the officials on the sideline. And the biggest lead of the game so far for South Carolina. South Carolina 
10-point lead led by their senior, Alisa Welch, free on the baseline, playing free. How invaluable is Alisa Welch? She's talking to freshman Asia Wilson. You can hear her say, every time I box out, you go get the rebound, you go get the ball, and it's because of that leadership. When she came to South Carolina, she was the first player from South Carolina of her level, of her stature, of how she can play. She was a three-time captain. Don Staley, when you say you got the right one, baby, she got the right one in Elisa Welch. Well, this is part of the great foundation and the growth, and we talked about it right before the tip. One of the real emerging programs. Yes, South Carolina was very good last year. They won the regular season title. They lost in the semifinals of this tournament last year, but were eliminated in the Sweet 16. They're going to make the next step. Don Staley has been very open about saying, we want to be what Tennessee has been and still is. We want national championships. We want everything that they have done. Reynolds down inside, needed a bounce, and boy, Tennessee needed a bucket. They've only scored 15 points in the last 18 minutes, and credit the defense of South Carolina, and particularly their captain, Elisa Welsh, who's done a really good job on Sierra Berta. Well, Tennessee and Pat Summit set the standard in the SEC. 17 times Tennessee has won this title. South Carolina looking for their very first. This is their first ever trip to the finals. Kadisha Sessions right to the front of the rim. Sessions with nine, and the lead is back up to double figures. 4.50 remaining. 51-41, South Carolina. South Carolina has really clouded that lane, not allowing Bashar Graves to have the driving opportunities. Well, Graves, the early foul trouble, and then never been able to really get it going here in the second half. Misses that tough left-handed layup. Tennessee, their focus is trying to get stops. Just one stop at a time if they want to get back in this ball game. Sessions lost the handle, bump there, throws up a wild shot off the front of the iron, and that's going to be a foul on Welsh going over the top. Elisa Welch recognizes Sessions wide open on the backside, and instead of settling for a jumper, she puts her head down, drives, and gets the Layup in the middle of the paint, and the South Carolina bitch loves it. How about that? As aggressively as Elisa Welsh plays for every second she's on the floor, first personal foul. And foul's not really a factor here. Tennessee just two team fouls, South Carolina with four. Smart play that time for Ariel Massingale working against Dozier, and on the pump fake, drew the contact. And Ariel Massingale, who's really been struggling, trying to get her offense, maybe a trip to the free throw line, will take the lid off the basket for Massingale. Thank you, Zubin. More tournament action coming your way on ESPNU tonight at 5.30 Eastern time. Number one, UConn. Big favorite, of course, to repeat once again as the national championship against the East Carolina. And then USF and Tulane to follow that championship on Monday. Back with Carolyn Peck looking at uh, Tennessee and South Carolina. And I'm sure that Gino Oriyama and UConn are looking in as well. Maybe a possible matchup in the final four or if the brackets stay the same prior to that because right now it's penciled in with Tennessee and UConn in the same regional in Albany New York I and still say that that would mean that Tennessee would be the eighth or the fourth number two to have to be in the same bracket as Connecticut I think that's wishful thinking because I think everybody in the country wants to see that rivalry that, that rematch to be rekindled I'm not sure you want to see it that early in the tournament. Remember, free throw shooting was such a big factor coming in for Holly Warlick's team. 18 of 20 yesterday in their semifinal win. Only four. Make that three of eight so far on the afternoon. And five straight misses from the free throw line. Jordan Reynolds, 15 points, got out to a quick start, but Elisa Welsh has been fantastic at both ends of the floor. Tennessee just hadn't been able to score against this defense of Don Staley's. 
But when you've got a player like Elisa Welch on your team, the leadership that she has brought, we saw her earlier talking to Asia Wilson, the resilience that she shows on the glass, and she plays within her game. She knows her limitations, but she also knows her strengths, and she plays to those greatly. Off the side of the iron, Carter with the rebound, falling out of bounds, and throws it. You can't put the ball back on the floor. Not under your opponent's basket, and Coates with the easy lay-in. Now, Tennessee in real trouble. They started 10 of 20 from the floor, 7 of 28 since. They can't use too much shot clock. Hunting for baskets. She's got, they've got to go quick hitters. Reynolds looking at the three. Burdick stepping inside. Good footwork high off the glass. Did not hit, draw iron, and the foul in the backcourt will be on Massinger. So, Andrea Carter with the hustle. But Elena Coates is right there to scoop it up and finish. Well, a lesson for young players, if you're Andrea Carter, you're better off just taking the turnover and setting your defense. Absolutely. Tiffany Mitchell open at the other end, lays it up and in. Wow, 2.45 remaining, and that's too easy. Big lead now for the player of the year, Tiffany Mitchell, and for South Carolina. Dawn Staley is demonstrating why she is coach of the year. The adjustments that she made against LSU and the adjustments that she made from the first Tennessee meeting to this one. She even knew with the pressure of Tennessee where the long pass run out was going to be and Tiffany Mitchell took full advantage. Elisa Welsh has thrown us, shown us a little bit of everything. Offense, defense, rebounding. Pretty good arm too. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good arm. That pass was right on the money. That is sixth missed free throw in a row for Tennessee. And Bashar Graves, like the rest of her teammates, I mentioned to Tennessee, was on pace to set a new all-time record for a single season, which is 75.9%. They were coming into this game at 75.6. But boy, this has been a dismal free throw shooting performance the second is knocked down especially when they needed it it was going to be a game where you know limited possessions they weren't going to get many second chance points and had to make the most of any trips to the line Tiffany Mitchell has driven the basketball past at least four Tennessee defenders nobody stopped her no reason for South Carolina to be in a hurry time and score very much on their side Kadisha Sessions again buries a three and turns to the crowd. She's the young woman who got the offense started now with a dozen for South Carolina. How big will it be for their hopes if she becomes a really reliable perimeter shooter? Well, if she can establish the consistency of scoring, teams will not be able to play off of her and crowd the lane from the post players. Jordan Reynolds off the back of the iron, and now South Carolina just a minute 42 away from their first ever postseason title look she called for it she had enough time to sit there have tea line it up get a spotter and knock it down and a pretty good celebration collision here between a couple of the volunteers the lady falls Bashara Graves down on the court it has been a tough evening for Bashara Graves the 6'2 junior out of Clarksville Tennessee ouch and Bashar Graves and Andrea Carter get tangled up. A lot of fans here from Knoxville and other parts of Tennessee. Andrea Carter going to the sideline. But I'm going to tell you, Paul, what is impressive to me and just to show the level of where South Carolina has come, there's a whole lot of Gamecock fans that are here in their maroon and black or garnet and black. And they have represented very well. Well, you look at the box scores as South Carolina was going through the season. They had any number of crowds up over 12, 13, 14, 15,000. Led the nation in scoring. Yep. In attendance. In attendance. That's what I meant. <laughs> this game is over. Tiffany Mitchell, Tennessee, just has not been able to find any consistent offense so far in the second half. And Welsh has done a marvelous job.
on Sierra Burdick, who came in averaging almost a double-double since the injury to Isabel Harrison. Burdick just six points on three of nine shooting, and look at the balance for South Carolina. Asia Wilson was big, really led the spurt for this team of South Carolina in the second half that gave them this spread and this comfort. And Elisa Welsh going to the sideline. What a career she has had. One of the foundations for South Carolina women's basketball and one of the first over to celebrate. You got to be happy for Elisa Welsh, the senior. This is part of the journey and why she came to South Carolina to win an SEC championship. She did that in her junior and senior year regular season and now she's on her way to winning her first SEC tournament title. ESPN has an NBA doubleheader Wednesday night, first at 8 Eastern time. The Clippers face the Thunder, then at 10.30, the Rockets square off against the Blazers NBA Wednesday, presented by State Farm at 8 and 10.30 on ESPN. Thunder playing without Kevin Durant with that foot injury, but Russell Westbrook, 43 in his last game, leading the way. They're now eighth in the Western Conference. Kadisha Sessions, a huge game, 12 points after scoring only two in the quarters and semis here in the championship game. Don Staley, a tremendous job in building this program. And like you talked about, not just a winning season, but she's, she's established a winning program now. And she used the standard that Pat Summit had set at Tennessee and where she needed to get this program to. Seventh year for Don Staley at South Carolina. This is a team that for many, many years was absolutely an afterthought. Nobody even talked about South Carolina in the SEC. We talked about, you know, her sharing the regular season. How did she feel about it? And she said, you know, she hated sharing. But she also said it fueled her. And she said she remembered seven years ago that fueled her to get to this point. And so this is just yet another notch of accomplishment of what Don Staley has done in South Carolina. Next step, going very deep into the NCAA tournament last year to the Sweet 16 before losing to North Carolina. Down inside, once again, Ibium with the basket, but where does Tennessee go from here? Is this a little bit of a shock to them? Because now I think that they will be a number two seed. We just don't know where. I think that it'll be something to go back and look at, uh, do some film work, because they have shown that they can be very competitive, but they've also shown that they can be very inconsistent. Well, South Carolina is a tough matchup for anybody, maybe except for UConn. And when South Carolina is making perimeter shots, when Tiffany Mitchell is on her game, when Kadisha Sessions scores 12 points and is making shots with their interior players, that is a very, very potent basketball team. Well, Don Staley has demonstrated she can play, she can win getting the ball inside. She can win scoring outside. But the thing that has been most consistent is South Carolina's defensive presence. The first postseason tournament title ever for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And in a trophy case that has three Olympic gold medals, I think that basketball is going to have a very prominent spot indeed. Elisa Welsh, the three-time captain, the first big in-state recruit to play for Don Staley. What a game she had today defensively against Sierra Burdick, who has been absolutely superb for Tennessee. Elisa Welch, we saw her talking to Asia Wilson and talk, telling the freshman, I'm going to box out, you go get the ball. It's the little things like that that make her the glue for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Elisa Welch looking for somebody else to hug. <laughs> There's somebody. <laughs> A tremendous accomplishment, and it wasn't easy to come by. Let's go to Kara Capuano with Tiffany Mitchell. Tiffany Mitchell just joking with me that her hair's a little bit mussed up, and I said, that's all right. You worked hard today. Y'all were only up by three points at the half. What changed in the second half and turned into another dominating win for South Carolina? Um, I mean, the locker room coach today just told us, you know, keep our foot on the gas. Uh, we had it right where we wanted. That's what we did.
You had to share the regular season title. You guys win this one on your own. How does that feel for this team? It feels great. You know, we dropped the game at Kentucky, which we should have had, but this one feels a lot better now that we're by ourselves. What's next for South Carolina? Uh, you know, we're going to enjoy this win. Uh, we have a 24-hour rule, so right now, we're just going to enjoy this right now. We're going to let you do that. Thanks, Tiffany. Thank you. Paul. Absolutely no sharing this one. Maybe the regular season title, but the postseason trophy belongs to South Carolina. Once again, the final score, the Gamecocks 62, the Lady Vols 46. Coming up next is SportsCenter. South Carolina and Don Staley, a winner here in Little Rock.